Well, the question is, what can be patented? Now, we all agree that uh, intellectual property should be protected. You probably think of a patent as something that is very specific, a specific invention. But patents have become something that is very broadly defined. If you look at interface patents, for example, you'll find that there are patents for playing a video on a browser window, something that general without any specifics to it. Now, this has come recently to affect all of our health, not just the gadgets that we buy. And there's a Supreme Court decision. We have a plaintiff with us that was in that decision that determined whether or not our human genes could be patented. And joining us in the studio today is Janae Girard. Janae, welcome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. We appreciate you taking this all the way to the Supreme Court. That's not an easy fight. I mean, you had cancer and you had to go through that, and then you had to go through fighting the legal system. Tell us a little bit about how you got involved in this, and, and tell us your story about uh, how this testing made a difference in your cancer situation. Well, basically, I was originally diagnosed at age 36 in 2006, and at that time, um, I, I got the diagnosis, and so they kind of rush you in to uh, figure out what your next steps are, and um, after getting my diagnosis, uh, I had to meet with the oncologist, and uh, the oncologist basically said, we'd like to determine whether or not you're predisposed for the breast cancer gene, either the BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene. And I said, well, how do you do that? And they said, well, there's one company that runs the test, and we take a blood sample and we send it in, and then we can determine that. The reason that that was important is because if you're BRCA1 positive, that means that you should consider getting a double mastectomy versus mm -hmm. a single. Mm -hmm. And then if you're BRCA2, that means that you're at a higher chance, a five times higher chance of not only getting breast cancer again or reoccurrence, but also ovarian cancer. Mm. So I actually tested positive for the BRCA2 gene. Mm -hmm. So that was in my 30s. I was divorced. Um, and uh, it was very disconcerting because I didn't have children and I was going to have to make some really tough decisions. Right. And mm -hmm. uh, so I had gotten second opinions along every step of the way mm -hmm. with my treatment, um, including pathology on my tumor, um, you know, my surgical decisions. And so I thought it quite natural to get a second opinion on the BRCA test before mm -hmm. I made these, you know, major decisions. But they wouldn't let me. Myriad Laboratory wouldn't let me. They wouldn't let me run it again. <laughs> they wouldn't. They wouldn't even run it again. Yeah. Wow. Now, wh why wouldn't they run it again? Did they give you a reason why no. they would not do it? No. No reason. No reason. Wow. That's and amazing. So, you went. At, what, what did you decide to do at that point? Well, um, I decided to go ahead and, and do the double mastectomy mm -hmm. and also to do the oophorectomy, which is ovarian removal. Mm -hmm. I thought it was the safest thing to reduce my chances of reoccurrence. Mm -hmm. um, cancer runs in my family. So, um, you know, I, I had some questions about just the, you know, historically with my family, what that might mean. So I went ahead and made those choices. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you get involved in the lawsuit? Well, uh, Myriad Lab, I mean, excuse me, ACLU has a subset called the Women's Rights Project. Mm -hmm. And so they take on cases that they believe are unconstitutional. So at the time, they started looking for women that represented different uh, facets of a lawsuit against Myriad. So, for example, one, what, uh, her insurance was not accepted by Myriad. Mm -hmm. She's a single mom. She can afford it. Mm -hmm. um, another uh, was... Because it's quite expensive. It is, $3,600. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, and they're the only ones allowed to do it. They had patented they the patented test. The, no, the well, gene. Well, the gene, exactly, which, which they wouldn't even let anybody else look at the gene that they had discovered this. Ironically, there are a number of uh, institutions that could run the test, mm -hmm. but they would slap them with a cease and desist order wow. saying it was illegal because they own the patent. Wow. That's so, amazing. So, yeah. So when, how did you find that out about, about their monopoly, essentially, on looking at the gene? When I tried to get my second opinion, I and I, I couldn't find any So then you looked up the ACLU, and you found out that they were starting this class Actually, they lawsuit? found me. Oh, They okay. found me. Um, they, uh, I was a referral from another patient that, that knows me really well, and mm -hmm. they thought, it, you know, because of my status, that I would be a good fit for the case. Wow. Now, did it lose at some lower court levels, or did you win all the way through? This is the, the hard part. It started, uh, it started at the state court, mm -hmm. and it, we actually won in New York. Mm. 
and then uh, it got appealed, and then it went to a federal court where they uh, said that it was legal for Myriad to own those, the genes. They, they declared that it wasn't um, a genetic patent, that it was um, uh, like a static patent. Mm -hmm. so, um, so then it went to the, the Supreme Court, and they were in the, in the midst of uh, working with a, a, another gene patent case that was Prometheus, and so they sent it back down to the federal court, <laughs> and finally it got back to the Supreme Court, and they ruled on it. So it, it's been a zoo. I mean, I I, um, I don't have how a many years did this go on? Two and a half. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So. Yeah, it's just amazing when, I, like I said in the introduction, when you look at what's happened to the patent law, it's got so amazingly broad that the things that nobody would imagine would be patentable. I, th I think there was even uh, like a patent for watching pornography on a computer or something. <laughs> I, I mean, silly, incredible stuff that's so general. Um, and, and in this case, like you said, it's not the test because they can still patent a method. But they had just discovered that these genes were indicative of higher risk and they wouldn't let anybody else even look for it. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, there was a stat that I, I came across in this. It said in the past 31 years, 20% of the human genome has been protected under U.S. patents. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's going to be a pretty uh, big game changer now, this, this court it, case. It really is. What, what are the implications now for people? Not, uh, talk about, first of all, people who are uh, there for breast cancer. They're, they're going to be able to get second opinions and, and cheaper tests, but are there, you know, what other uh, implications are there? That well, you know? first off, uh, because the monopoly will be broken, mm -hmm. th they believe that the price, experts believe that the price will drop to about $150 mm. to run the test, which makes it a lot more affordable for the, the public. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, you know, That's a big difference, one hundred fifty to thirty-seven hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's like crazy. A, it's crazy. <laughs> pretty um, big profit margin there. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, one of the other things that a lot of people don't bring up that really scares me is that Myriad Myriad Laboratory banked all of our breast cancer data in the whole United States hmm. for quite a long time. Now, what's going to happen to that? I don't know. Oh, that's interesting. Well, it's is the ACLU interested in that? I, uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. So. But the point is, is that we may be furthering research with that data mm -hmm. or finding uh, certain areas that might be more prone for cancer or breast cancer, mm -hmm. um, certain cities, certain territories, um, looking at more in depth at hereditary issues. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that was a big problem for me, that mm -hmm. they have all of that data. Yeah, so. and from what I saw the Supreme Court decision, they did uphold their patents on a certain type of DNA, complementary DNA or something like that. It's that synthetic. They can, synthetic, yeah. It's created, uh -huh. right. Right. So they've got this large database of genetic sampling that they can look at. They can turn that over to the government if they wish because we've seen what happens with telephone records and right. internet records and that sort of thing that if you give it to a third party, often, in spite of any... Uh, assurances that they gave you in an agreement, uh, they're turning that over. That's really what CISPA was all about, was basically yeah. taking that liability away from Google and other companies so that they could turn this over without being sued by uh, people who had given, you know, without, because they violated their user agreements. Yeah. It's quite scary. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, what, what do you... Uh, what was the process at, at the at the lower levels when you when you first got involved? Like you said, they started out at the state level, mm -hmm. and uh, then you were that was in New York, but you were here in in Texas. Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. The, the six plaintiffs are scattered around the country. They're in mm -hmm. different places. Mm -hmm. Now there was a quote from the ACLU that said, uh, "Today the court struck down a major barrier to patient care and medical innovation." This was uh, Sandra Park. Mm -hmm. Do you know her? Yeah, she's okay. my lawyer. Senior staff attorney, uh, she said, Myria did not invent the BRCA genes and should not control them. Because of this ruling, patients will have greater access to genetic testing and scientists can engage in research on these genes without fear of being sued. So it's, it's going to be pretty big because, like I said in the previous quote, there's 20% already had basically been shut off for anybody else doing any kind of testing or evaluation. Mm -hmm. And uh, now those are going to be opened up for people to do things. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's got big implications as well for pharmaceutical companies mm -hmm. and the types of patents that they have there. And that's, that's a big thing that we're seeing in, in health care costs is the sure. cost of drugs and then pushing this. I know you were talking about what they 
did to entice you about the dangers of uh, taking this. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, um, being in the oncology office, they have you watch a video on a DVD. It's required before you actually submit your blood sample. And I, di I didn't quite like it because it was kind of a bullying tactic. It was very dark and scary, and it was very influential to try to get you to, to make that decision to take the test. Mm -hmm. And I particularly didn't like that because uh, some people will respond to that, some people, you know, mm -hmm. would just be scared and run it when they weren't even at risk. Well, it's amazing when you look at how much of the television advertising that, uh, you know, the, the advertisers are so many of them are pharmaceutical companies, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it's become, uh, for the longest time, we didn't watch television. We moved to an area where we got no reception of broadcast television. And so for about a, a 10 year window there, I hardly ever watched, we would watch movies, but we wouldn't watch television. When I came back and started watching it, I was absolutely amazed. It was like every other commercial was a drug commercial. That's true. <laughs> and That's and true. so it's, uh, it, it is a, a very much a, uh, they're, they're pushing this on people Commercials are very, very effective, and when they have you in a situation where you're scared, uh, you've just been diagnosed with cancer, and then they run this on you so that they can make these obscene profits. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you think about this, at $150, other people are making a, a very good profit to do this test for $150. They were making, we said, $3,600, $3,700? They, yeah. they, uh, they charge $3,600, and they run 100 tests per day. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, well, where do you go from here? Is there anything else that... that uh, <laughs> you mean the next adventure? Yeah, what's, the, yeah, what's your next adventure? <laughs> well, um, I actually run a group of 36,000 breast cancer uh, followers in the United States. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, within my group, I run a website called Beyond the Booby Trap. And um, basically, it's, it's about patient advocacy so that women can educate themselves, talk amongst themselves, and... Uh, you know, be able to, to uh, know what to expect so it reduces some of the fear of treatment. That's great. But also helps them make decisions. That's great. Inform decisions. We have our, our closest friend is, uh, has breast cancer and has come back a second time. And, and mm. uh, it's, it's uh, you know, she, she's uh, in the medical profession, so she, uh, it, it's, you know, it's not the sort of thing where she doesn't know about some of this, but it's still a personal thing that, sure. that she's got to go through. It's great to have a support network like that. The name of that website is Beyond, Beyond the Booby Trap. Dot com. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, great. Well, thank you so much for doing this. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing that you would take this on, especially when you're sick, that you would take on and fight uh, for people's rights, everybody's rights, not just yours, but so many people now are going to be helped by this decision. I really appreciate you doing that. And I know a lot of people are very happy with what you've done. It's going to make a big decision, and a, a big difference in a lot of people's lives. Well, thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's a very important case. And as Janae pointed out, it was a long process. It took them over two years to go through the courts. But you know, the process actually begins with waking people up. It begins with information, with understanding what the government is doing. Who would have thought that companies were allowed to patent your genes and charge exorbitant, greedy prices for these tests that they're performing? So the process of waking up is something that you can help people do with a subscription to Prison Planet TV. Just one subscription will help you share that with up to 10 people at a time, and it also helps to support our media operations here. So go to prisonplanet.tv and sign up for a subscription. If you're watching on YouTube, we certainly would appreciate that, and it will help you to wake up other people and inform them. Well, that's it for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show.